Please welcome the co-founder and CEO of Blueground, Alex Hadzialef Theroux, and the SVP of Global Corporate Development for Selena, Sam Kazari, in conversation with Skift Senior Research Analyst, Seth Borkham. Hello, guys. Hello. Welcome back, everyone. Hope you had a good networking session. Hope you're enjoying the day with us. Uh, I'm, I'm very, very excited for this session because we're talking about this great merge in, and I think we have two of the companies that really exemplify that today. We've got Blue Ground and Selena, so thank you both for joining us. Thank you. Great to uh, be here. Yeah. Sam, I'm going to just jump into the use. Selena, uh, I've been following a lot, but I don't know if everyone here in the room has. It's a, uh, one of your websites, live, work, explore, all this stuff, you, everything at once. W what is a Selena? Tell us about it. So look, a, a Selena is essentially an, an extension of the local community. So what we're creating is an experience, right? Where you want to live like a local, you want to travel like a local. That's the new world we live in. So that's what we're doing. We're working with the community to kind of build an extension where you know, people that don't live in that community can come and experience that community. And so you have you have like co-working spaces, right? You have rooms, you yep. have shared so rooms. Have, you have yeah, we, so we're 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 a hybrid. So we've got we we densify spaces. So we've got shared rooms. We want to almost democratize pricing so that if you can only afford to pay, you know, twenty dollars a night, or if you can afford to pay hundred dollars a night or three hundred dollars a night, there's six room products that, that you that we run the entire gamut. So it's democratized pricing. It's also you know meant to, so you can live there. So you don't have to use our F&B. While we would love for you to use our F&B, we've got community kitchens. So it's truly come live there. Get up in the morning. We've got wellness. We've got co work. You can. This is a, it's a it's a playground for like the next generation of traveler. And as we're looking at these photos in the background, it, I I'm reminded you you have a very tropical start, right? You're you're yep. based out of Panama and South America, right? Yep. The, yep. We were born out of Panama, so we've got kind of Latin. You know, we've got Latin vibes, Latin roots. Um, it doesn't matter where in the world you go, our, our products are is going to have kind of a Latin feel to it. And it's a welcoming kind of feel. All right. Excellent. And Alex. You have uh, Blue Ground. It's a furnished, flexible apartment. What, is, what does that mean, furnished, flexible apartment? Sure. Um, so at Blue Ground, really, what we do is we operate uh, a network of moving ready and uh, beautifully designed apartments for stays of a month or, or longer. So uh, why did I start this business? Because uh, my first job out of university, I was a consultant, traveled around the world, um, lived in many different places, but it, I found out firsthand how difficult it is to rent an apartment for just a few months. So I had the idea of uh, enabling people to, to do that if they want to. So travel, uh, rent, an, rent an apartment very easily for a month or two in one place or go to another place. Um, that's kind of what we're building. Uh, and we're building it since 2013. It's a super exciting thing to, to be able to bring that to, uh, to people. Uh, it, you really, you, you broaden your perspective, you get the chance to live in many places. Right now, we operate 7,000 apartments. Um, we plan to go to 40,000 by 2025. And uh, we're really excited to be here. Uh, this is the great merging. We always thought we're one leg on real estate, one leg on hospitality. So we feel really at home here. Yeah, are you just uh, a landlord who snuck into a hospitality conference, or? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we definitely have aspects of multiple um, traditional players, right? Property manager, landlords, interior designer, um, uh, the broker, but of course, because we bring all that vertically integrated, so you go on our website, you can find any apartment anywhere on network, you can book it very easily, just in a few minutes, you can move in the next day, uh, you can change the apartment, go somewhere else. And of course, what really makes a difference is the technology and the network. Technology uh, enables the, uh, the booking. Our booking process is extremely easy. Staying in an apartment is extremely easy through a mobile app. And the network, you can effectively kind of move wherever, you, wherever and whenever uh, you want. Uh, so that's really different uh, than, than, than a landlord. Yeah. And so I'd like to talk a bit, uh, maybe prompt both of you to talk about who your kind of target consumer is, how you're seeing the, the, the situation on the ground changed. So, so Sam, you're founded on this, this work life manager. Who is the perfect Selena customer? Who do you see showing up to your property? So for us, our, the perfect customer is somebody who, who kind of wants to actually travel like a local, right? Our, our target, our target, our average age is about 32 years old. It's somebody who's kind of forgiving, who's into more experiences and is into social connectivity versus a marble floor with kind of glass and steel. You know, we think that our customer forgives us for those for those shortfalls because of the experience they have, um, and we're really big on social. So so you know if you want to go see at a Selena, the Selena customer is somebody that wants to engage and wants to socially interact. 
Um, our benchmark is, you know, did you make a friend? I mean, that's, you know, I know everybody's got their own sort of KPI through the business. Ours is, did you make a friend? And 66, 67% of our guests made a friend. Um, and to us, that, that's the most important part, right? We, we try to sort of, it's not, staying in a fancy room is, is was, I think, is yesterday's news. Yeah. Um, you know, people still like that stuff, but look, the, the you know, Gen Y, Gen Z, and, and the millennial traveler is, is sort of shifted. It's about experience. Luxury travel dead. You heard it here first, folks. All right. Uh, no. All right. So, uh, but are they working when they're staying yes, with you? Yes, and that's, and that's the other thing, right? So, so I mean, COVID has sort of kind of made this, kind of has accelerated this. We had, we had Digital Nomad on our deck seven years ago when we, when the company was founded, and everybody's used to laugh and say, what the hell is a digital nomad, right? But no, people are working, and it's really interesting to see. Um, and we don't see it as much in the US. You kind of see it outside of the US when you enter Latin America and you go into some of these kind of more tropical places. It's wild. You, you, walk, into a, you walk into a place, and there's people surfing in the morning. They're having some sort of, a, you know, some sort of wellness activity. They're going to have a smoothie. They're going to have a, you know, a fruit bowl of some sort. They're going to be there. There's a bunch of MacBooks kind of running around. And whether that's we've got legitimate co work space where you've got telephone booths, meeting rooms. You can sit down, you can crank out real work, or if you want to go work by the pool or work by the beach, we've got excellent Wi-Fi, you know, so be it. You have, people are having lunch, and then they're sort of winding down their day, and whether that includes another yoga class or a surf class or something, it's, 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 it's mind-blowing, kind of like, you know, and I, and look, and I, wasn't a, I, I, I wasn't a believer until, like, I really, really saw it, right? And I really kind of understood the digital nomad kind of space. Well, can I, can I ask you this, because you guys are kind of experts in this. It's easy to say digital nomad, and you, you kind of painted a stereotypical picture. Are there any like nuances to be in to that that customer that you miss that you think you guys do well? Um, look, it's you know I kind of kind of bucketed everybody, but it, but depending on where in the world you are, that that customer looks a little, feels a little bit different. So I mean, like Israel is a good example. Our, our our target kind of customer in Israel happens to be a 45 year old sort of younger couple that's got it's got two kids that are younger, <laughs> and that's who's kind of traveling, and they've got the flexibility to go work from one of our properties, right? While our you know in Bocas in, in Panama, that 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 traveler tends to be somebody that's a you know it's out of college, is a bit kind of younger, and is a little bit more strapped for cash. So it's 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 it's, it's the digital nomad is is no longer. I mean, I think if people do you think of like the younger generation, but I think it's everybody now. Awesome, excellent, um, Alex. I want to talk to you about also about your customer. Do you think you you have the same customer base? Is it a thirty two year old surfer or? or? <laughs> No, I think in our case, it's, it's quite different because uh, our network of, of apartments is really in major urban centers, okay. right? So our average stays about four and a half months, and it's really people that choose to change cities, change neighborhoods, so there is the element of mobility, for sure. Um, I'm one of them. I, I've been uh, staying at Blue Grounds around the world for the past six years. I've never owned a single piece of furniture in my life, so I think there are more people that want to have this asset light, right, uh, lifestyle. They want to uh, be able to move more freely. And uh, for them, ultimate currency is time. Yeah. Uh, actually, only 20% of our guests uh, recognize themselves as being frugal, but they really value the flexibility and the ease that they have. And 50% of them stay longer with us, extend. And about one out of five has stayed in multiple locations. So it's a sticky product. And especially after COVID, as we all know, remote working became much more prevalent. So more and more people are entering that lifestyle. Yeah, and actually, we, were, we had a prep call. Uh, you know, this is all stage, folks, but no, no, it's, it's not. <laughs> but you were telling us about the demographic changes um, during COVID. So what happened to your length of stay during COVID? Tell, tell us about that. Yeah, so what happened during COVID, we, uh, the fact that people could not predict uh, what, when the offices would open again or where, where would they want to be next, we saw the duration of stay going uh, down. So from four and a half months went down to three months, but then people were extending more and more. Uh, so that's one change we saw. Uh, of course, people asked for more um, space to be able to work, and the other, they wanted more flexibility. So we introduced um, a product we call the Blue Ground Pass, where it allows to give more flexibility to our guests to move anywhere they want within the network. Actually, that came because one of our guests, uh, actually a product manager at Uber, reached out to me directly on LinkedIn and said, Alex, I stayed with you guys in four cities. You know, you don't treat me anything differently. So we introduced that product which is, is, is doing really well, uh, and that uh, really allows people to kind of have that flexibility and, and uh, live in different places. Well, Alex, let's put a pin on that, because I definitely want to come back and talk about subscriptions. Um, I want to talk about how you guys have grown during the pandemic, because you both have. Uh, Sam, I think Selena opened something like, did I read it right, like 100 new properties? during the pandemic? Uh, so yeah, so yeah, about, yeah. So we've got 100 open locations now, so. 50 coming online this year. Um, and I think like, you know, 80 of them were sort of kind of pandemic babies. So that's like 25,000 beds. Down. So the, the question is basically just how? 
how'd you do that? Yeah, look, we, you know, unlike traditional kind of hotel companies, we're sort of like a hybrid. Um, we're identifying sort of reposition, what we think is underutilized product. There's tons of it in the world, right, in every corner of the world. So we're, we're taking that product, we're, we're, we're programming it, we're doing kind of cosmetic touches, we're not doing structural stuff. Um, and we're kind of, I like to call it Instagram-fying it, and, and sort of kind of by doing that and by creating this by programming where you've got wellness, you've got F&B, where you've got kind of travel, you, you can book all your excursions and creating that kind of community, doing that with the community. So the community is helping design that product. It's helped us kind of, it's helped us kind of scale real quickly. And we're a lease model. So we're not worried about kind of going vertical. Yeah, so I guess that's my other question is like, who, who's paying for all these properties? Where's the cash coming yeah, from? Yeah, so look, so it's, you know, there's, there's, there's an infinite supply of sort of single proprietors or mom and pop operators in every corner of the world that manage their hotel. It's been in their family forever. Um, and it's, it's a simple pitch. We do it all in-house. We, we find them, we identify them, we go to them. Um, and we say, hey, look, if you're making $100,000 a year, we'll pay you $125,000 a year. Um, we'll sign a 20-year lease with you. Your property's gonna appreciate. We're gonna put money into your property with our partners. We're gonna, you're gonna have steady, you know, you're gonna have steady cash flow that's gonna let you recap your asset and go home and collect the check. And in 20 years, you're gonna have something that's worth, you know, multiples of what it was worth today. And hopefully we can continue to kind of engage and, and lease this product. So there's just there's almost never ending, there's never ending supply of it. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna ask you a similar question, Alex, about how you've grown your business and you have a lot of properties now too. Just a quick reminder to the audience that we will be taking questions during this, this session. So I think these are interesting folks. If you think there's anything I'm missing, you know, let me know and I'll ask them. So Alex, tell me about how you've been expanding. You're also leasing up a lot of uh, apartments, right? Yes, um, so in terms of growth, we, we've grown about 50% in 2021 and expect to grow more than 100% in 2022. What is driving that growth is really uh, what, what we find the lack of furnished uh, supply. So there's not a lot of uh, monthly furnished rentals out there because uh, landlords not necessarily want to buy furniture, put it in their apartments. Uh, maybe one tenant wants that, the next doesn't want it. They have to offer it on a monthly basis, a different type of business. So that, that demand that we see, uh, the moment we put a, a furnished supply out there, um, we just get it rented. So we, we see that as we grow, the demand grows. So the demand follows. Um, so we've been growing, as, as you mentioned, mostly with leases. I know the master lease uh, sometimes has a negative yeah. connotation because there have been companies that haven't been able to manage that well. I think there are two risks there. One is uh, we do a one-year leases and we renew. We renew about 95% of our leases. If you take longer-term lease, there's always a risk uh, that things change or maybe you didn't do a good calculation at the beginning when you were calculating the profitability of that location. Uh, but the one year is really protective uh, protect for us. Also the fact that we start small in each location. We start with a few units, we, we do a rigorous analysis before we list the units, but then after uh, we always um, continuously uh, assess and then optimize and scale where it makes sense for us. Do you ever have landlords not renew your lease or? Uh, not renew my, uh, our lease. If you sign a one year lease instead of a master lease, you're at risk of uh, getting kicked uh, out? So we're not getting kicked out because the value probably is very strong for the landlord, right? So I think Europe and the US is a bit different. Let me, I will be, I try to be fast. In Europe, uh, landlords rent with us. They don't pay broker fees. They don't pay property management fees. Have 100% occupancy. We deal with the guests. Zero hustle for them. We get much more requests from landlords than what we can actually. Um, we want to. We eventually lease. In the U.S., multifamily buildings and, and, and developments. They have a lot of units. They want to have a little bit of a percentage, five to 10% of the building, where they have this monthly furnished option, because that demand is continuously uh, growing. And it's a different business, um, so that's why we don't get kicked out. Actually, it was 95 percent. I said it's five percent. The majority of that is us deciding that we want to move somewhere else. It's very cheap for us to move somewhere else. It only costs us 500 to 1,000 dollars to take our furniture from one location and move to the other location. So, lease is a. It could be a bad thing, but in our case, we manage it in a way that's really no risk. Okay. So let's uh, let's talk a bit about how you get your customers. Let's talk a bit about one of my favorite topics: subscriptions. Uh, Selena. Uh, has, has a multiple subscription offerings, actually. So you've got the Selena Pass. Uh, I think we have a slide, and we can go one slide forward. It's the next one, I think. Uh, what's, what was the, 
How's, do you, have, has this Nomad Passport been successful for you? How's it working out? Yeah, so during COVID, uh, what we realized is that people want to, you know, we'd always thought about creating, creating this kind of membership club or this kind of program where you could float through Selena. So guests usually spend kind of three to three and a half days. It's a single location, but the idea is that to build a network within a country so that you can hop around throughout the country. With Passport, what we've been able to do for our guests is almost create this thing we, we call it like living at Selena. It's kind of called, called a co-live product is, is kind of how it's been kind of rebranded in today's world. So we're offering you, you know, two options. One, that you can just go straight live at a Selena for 30 days. Um, everything's included, your co-work's included, your wellness is included. Just have a great time. You've got a full service kitchen that you can leverage, cook the food you want, go integrate. And we try to map people through the program with each other. So if we've got, if you want to go to Panama, we're like, we set it up for you. We're like, look, there's 25 other people that are co-living co 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 at this property. Go there. That's fantastic. Go have that experience. You guys can go get, you know, go exploring together, make friends, right? That, that's easy to do. And then we realized that some people that want to kind of bounce around through properties want a lot more flexibility. So there's another option that they can just freely float. You open up the app, you book three days here, you want to go to the next city, three days in there, two days here, and just you can kind of float freely through the system. So we've got about 1,500 people today roughly living yeah. in the system. Um, and I think that, you know, that number's a little stale, and that number today is about, there's been about 5,000 people that have kind of gone through the program. So, so people are picking it up. They're like, why, why live in San Francisco? I, if I can just stay within the same time zone? Um, I'm just going to go live somewhere else. Are those customers more profitable? Um, those customers are those customers are helping fill an occupancy gap. They're not necessarily always more profitable, right? Because that customer, you know, the, the chances that that customer over the course of 30 days, like eats at your F&B, uses your leverages your F&B product, um, you know, then they're not going to. But what they do is create a better experience because they've now integrated with the local community, and 50% of our revenue comes from the local community. So they've be, they've made friends. Now you've got you now guests that are coming for a short-term stay. They're they're all going to meet at the bar. They're going to hang out. So what they do do is they add that other element. They, they, they are, they're like that hybrid local, right? Got they, they, they've, they've got the experience already. They've, they've gone exploring. So now you've got the local. You've got that hybrid local that builds a safety, like a safer bridge, because people are always sort of wary um, for that hotel guest. You're kind of deputizing them. Yeah, to go out <laughs> the world. They're, they're, they become good brand ambassadors, yeah. and that and they're staying for about 55 days. So 55 it, days. 55 days. So that's a, that's a lot of you know. Uh, Alex, tell us about the Pass program. So you've also got subscriptions. So we've got two real-life subscription travel companies <laughs> here. Uh, how's your Blue Ground Pass working out for you? Yeah, so the Pass we introduced during the pandemic. Um, I, it's going well. I mean, we already have more than 150 people uh, uh, getting on the Pass. They really like it. They're able to kind of move around. Of course, even without the Pass, the product itself lends it, itself to um, flexibility. So people say one place, they move to the other. I mentioned before, one out of five has stayed with us in multiple locations. Mm -hmm. um, and we're very excited uh, specifically about the past. We recently added a new feature where you can, um, as a guest in Blueground, you can freeze your lease. So you can say, let's say I take a month off, I go to Tulum, I stay in a Selena, right? And then I mm. go back and I go back to New York City and I don't have to pay rent. Because typically you have to pay both the rent uh, in your apartment, but then you go to travel. So that we're excited about because it adds a l even more flexibility, and that's what people asked us to do. So that's actually really interesting because I was kind of thinking of you guys as this hybrid travel thing, but actually by creating this more flexible lease system, you can encourage more travel on other properties. That's a cool, cool concept. And are those, you find those customers are obviously more profitable or not, maybe not obviously? They have, they stay longer. They stay with, longer. Uh, because they have to commit to at least six months or 12 months. Yeah. Average stay being four and a half months. And, uh, and they tend to experience, uh, you know, different locations, different cities. And they, we haven't done the number to see whether, how long they will eventually stay because they're a relatively new product. But we expect that to be even longer because they don't have furniture. They're very flexible. They move around. So they have to stay in another blue ground in, in the next move. So yeah, but we'll, we'll need to see how, how long yeah. they stay. And are you, I, I guess talk to me a little bit, and I'll ask you the same in a second, Sam. Talk to me about how you acquire your customers in the first place. So uh, is this just corporate housing? Do you just go to Deloitte and say, you know, I got apartments for you? Like, how does that work? So 70% of our uh, revenue comes from what we call B2C. So this individuals booking, uh, uh, booking themselves. 30% is B2B. Um, in terms of revenue, 85% is direct. So they come on our website uh, and they book directly uh, with us. How do they find the website? Um, when you want to rent an apartment, a furnished apartment, there's no one-stop shop solution, right? People might Google, they say furnished apartment in New York City, you find Blue Ground number two, number one there. Or they might say, uh, I want to check uh, Street Easy or Zillow. Or uh, they might go on Airbnb. So we want to be everywhere, but 
as I mentioned before, 85% is direct. Mature market, this goes up to 95% uh, because there's word of mouth, people get to use, there's repeat use, as I mentioned before. Uh, so that's how we get our customers. So just to clarify what you just said, because I think that's an interesting point. You are both available to book a blue ground on Airbnb and on Zillow. Uh, yes, so Zillow is more, you cannot book online, but you can move, because the idea is people have to f find blue ground, first of all, right? Especially in new markets. OTAs, Airbnbs, VRBO is a very small portion for us, about four to five percent. Um, and then, the, yeah, so they would potentially uh, book on Airbnb or directly book on Blue Ground. Yeah. And I guess, Sam, similar question to you, what is Selena's distribution strategy? Yeah, so, you know, today about 50% is sort of direct to kind of consumer, um, and the other kind of 50% is a hosh posh of sort of every other kind of, you know, OTAs and everything else that kind of comes with it. Um, and, you know, for, for us, what's, what's really interesting is, is companies like Blue Ground, right? Because companies like Blue Ground are, are helping people kind of live like locals, and word of mouth travels quickly. So what we're trying to build is this rooms business, but, you know, half of our revenue comes from everything else that's F&B. So it's great to have more companies that are kind of bringing more travelers to communities because that the chances are that what's the hot spot to go to? This was designed by somebody in the local community. It's run by that local entrepreneur, and they're going to come have a beer here. And our product, necessarily our room product, isn't for everybody. Yeah. So, the, so it's so it's the, the other side of this kind of acquisitions model is really sort of kind of create word of mouth, um, and with other innovative companies sort of kind of flooding these markets with travelers where people are trying to live like a local. We're sort of kind of picking up ground, that, you know, through on that front as well. One of the questions I have for you is, is speaking of like this word of mouth thing, you know, you you guys have expanded dramatically. Is the customer who stays in Tel Aviv going to be able to give word of mouth traffic to your Latin American customer? Or are those two disconnected? Or? Um, yeah, so, so they're, they're sort of kind of connected. Now, what's interesting is that, and I, I learned this kind of now working kind of for Selena, that, that, it, that the, actually the Israeli customer <laughs> actually is a global traveler. It is amazing how, how, many, kind of, how many customers are kind of floating around um, within Central and kind of South America. Now, two thirds of our portfolio is in Central and South America, right? And so that, that's, our biggest, yeah. that's our biggest kind of customer base. But yeah, but they are kind of cross pollinating. They are sort of kind of moving around um, there was this huge you know we've almost figured out these kind of travel routes like like Panama is a good example like a, like a lot of people from Israel spend a lot of time in Panama on the west coast of Panama no idea why it's been like that for the last 35 years 40 years it, it, it just it, it just it's just it is what it is right so so there's this kind of weird there, there's these interesting sort of kind of travel it's dynamics like kind of hidden travel network yep. that you're yeah. trying to exploit. that's interesting <laughs> Uh, let's let's talk uh, one of our final topics. Let's talk about tech. It's going to be a question just for both of you. Uh, how do you use tech in, in your offering, and, and what do you build yourself versus what do you buy? So, Alex, I'll throw it to you first. Yeah, uh, we've, we've uh, allocated quite a bit of um, resources in the technology. The business could not be operational and profitable without it. We have now about 60 people um, that are developing technology um, and working on data to, uh, has enabled to, to build what we have built today, and we'll be doubling that uh, allocation in the future. So what we have specifically, Booking Engine uh, works uh, in a way that you can browse all our apartments, um, book online, uh, make payments very seamlessly. Mobile application, you get access to a mobile app, so you how to check in, you can extend, ask for cleaning, maintenance, chat with us directly, uh, see the remaining of the network through the app um, if you want to check that. And then we have internal uh, system we develop proprietary, manage all the apartments from low rise buildings in Athens to multifamily developments in New York City in a consistent way. Yeah. We wouldn't be able to do it without it. And a dynamic pricing system, again, proprietary because 30 day plus, uh, Market. there's no, there is no uh, software out there. So we've built all of that and that's kind of really uh, the, what's driving our growth and our profitability. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, so we, we've done similar. I mean, a lot of our capital, which is why we like the lease model, because we're not investing in real estate, has, has gotten kind of into tech. We, we own our PMS system. We own all our systems. You know, why, why pay somebody a fee? Um, we own our event system now. So at some point in time when you were kind of having events, we were paying somebody a commission. So we've kind of built all that in-house. Um, and it's also the only way to manage. We've got 25,000 beds across kind of 26 countries and 100 locations. Um, the only way to do that, there, there is no system that'll do that for us. And additionally, we have a flex model. So a lot of our product, 25, 30% of our room product is shared or can be flexed. So you can turn two twin beds because you're, you, you're seeing demand for kind of a queen bed. You can almost give, you know, you can almost trade. So we've got a lot of arts and, and crafts and DJs and people that come through our properties that may do, uh, you know, may work for us here. And, we pay them back with, hey, go, go, you know, go travel for a month here. And there's, we had no, there's no system that was kind of flexible. That's a very unique challenge. Yeah. I don't know how many, that's a unique one. I, um, well, 
Look, thank you both so much for joining us. We're, we're wrapping up on time, but I think these are both uh, fascinating businesses, uh, the great merge, and I think you see it right here first. Come, come talk to these guys and learn more about it. So, so thanks for joining us. Thank, thank you. you thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you.